What's going on everybody? It's your man Matt on the Jaffe with Jaffe Cycling. And we've got another episode of The Hot Cheek, aka Cheeks on Fire. Today I've got a special, special guest with me. She is a Neo Soul song artist. She is a writer as well as a vocal coach. Please welcome Miss Allison Bull. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and uh I hope you're ready to get into it. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So just to give you a little bit of tip of what we're doing here is I'll ask you a couple of questions, get to know you a little bit better. As we ask the questions, we'll be pedaling. Mm -hmm. um, we'll increase the cadence as well as the speed by a little bit. And uh, hopefully you can keep up. <laughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go ahead and get started at about 100 uh, watts of power. So we'll start off a really light pace. And we'll start it going like that. So the first question I got for you, mm -hmm. singing. Talk to me a little bit about singing. Well, how did you get started singing and what drew you to the neo soul genre? Um, well, I started singing in church. Uh, I was the only kid in the adult choir. And I really looked up to my choir director and it was a gospel choir. So he really made me feel very confident about my vocal abilities. And from there I was trained um, all throughout my schooling as well as with a vocal coach and yeah singing has really been my life and my peace and my catharsis for a, for as long as I can remember so yeah that's um, how I got started so and, and you said that church was here in DC right yes that's correct so we got to shout that church out oh right? yeah shout out nativity <laughs> there you go. in Northwest I believe now talk to me a little bit about uh, you've been actually nominated for a number of awards mm -hmm. and you've won quite a bit. Talk to me a little bit about what that's uh, been like for you. Um, well, it's been nice to have the, the recognition of, of my peers and my community. Um, so that, that's been very gratifying and humbling. It makes me feel like the music's being heard and enjoyed. And that's the most important thing for me because... Most of what I write and sing about is my own personal, oh, excuse me, most of my own personal experiences. So um, it's nice to be able to share that with other people and for it to be, you know, to garner some level of recognition. So that's been nice. Nice, nice. So I'm going to lock in here now. All right. So we're going to increase. You want to take a look up here? We're going to go from 100 to about 150. Okay. So you want to just start putting a little bit more up for there. So now we mentioned Neo Soul. Talk mm -hmm. to me a little bit about the early inspiration. Like what really drew you to that genre? Oh, uh, well, I feel like it encompasses a lot of the genres that I love. I love soul music, I love jazz, I love R&B. So it kind of has a variety and a mix of all of those things. So it's kind of like my one-stop shop of all the genres that I enjoy. And when I was a teenager, I loved to listen to Alicia Keys and Erica Badu and Music Soul Child and D'Angelo. So it's just the love just, it's always been there. And Erica Badu is my favorite singer of all time. So, you know, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so as far as music is concerned, right? So you've got a number of uh, singles out right now. Mm -hmm. So one that I thought was pretty interesting was the Friend Zone. Mm. Talk to me a little bit about where that came from and kind of what was the inspiration behind that song? Well, I actually wrote that song about a relationship that ended during quarantine. And um, it was a very painful relationship for me, but I feel like it was a life-changing one because it, it made me learn so much about myself and kind of opened up some shadow aspects that I didn't want to come to terms with. So there was a lot of growth there, being forced to really love myself and be my own best friend. But that song really stemmed from being in the space of how difficult it is to be friends with someone that you have such a deeper feelings for, but knowing that it can never be more than that because you have to love yourself more. If you were to stay with that person, then you wouldn't be being your own best friend, you know? So that's a painful experience that I'd never, never had in the past. So that's what I meant by friend zone. It was, that song, I just, it was very painful for me to record and to sing, but it was done. And I submitted it to Duran Bernard because he had posted up something on Instagram about wanting to do collabs and I forgot about it. And then three months later, he reached out to me, said he loved it. Uh -huh. 
we turned it into a collaboration and I was really excited because he works with Erica Badu, so I'm just one step away from my favorite singer. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, it all, all's well that ends well. So I'm very thankful for the experience. I feel like I'm a much stronger person and I got a great song out of it, so I'm happy. So you also mentioned uh, that you coach as well and you teach. Uh -huh. um, so talk to me a little bit about like the technical and the fundamental aspect of music that you actually bring in into a lot of your teaching. Okay, so, you know, I've, like again, I've been trained all throughout my life in school and with a coach. I'm certified through the New York Vocal Academy to vocal train and vocal coach. And, you know, it's great to be able to take something that I love to do and give that gift to other people and watch them be able to do something they love to do with confidence and, and a deeper understanding and be able to take care of their voice because your body is your instrument as a singer, so it's very important to take care of it, not to strain it learn how to use it properly and it's just a very gratifying cycle to see be able to give something that I get so much enjoyment out of to someone else and then in turn them get the same enjoyment by being able to constantly improve. Awesome. So, so you mentioned cycle there and that always gets me excited whenever we talk about cycling. Uh, so what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about you cycling. But first, we got to look at the screen. We're going to go up to about 200 watts here. Bruh, I don't know if I can. <laughs> we got to push. We're going to push. Oh my God. So I actually met you on the Juneteenth ride uh -huh. with, with a bike club called Streets Caller. Uh -huh. Talk to me a little bit about that ride and how did you find out or hear about that group? Well, one of my really good girlfriends, the one who gave me my bike, she wanted me to come be a part of this group. And biking was fun. I love being outside. I like doing outdoor activities. So we ended up going for this ride. My bike is a Schwinn Cruiser. It's slow. So you were kind enough to stay behind with me. So I didn't get completely left behind. And yeah, I was proud of this. I finished the ride, but it was very challenging. That hill at Howard damn near killed me. The Howard Hill. But here I am still standing. Still I rise, right? There you go. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So you also mentioned that you have a cruiser. So talk to me a little bit about what would be your ideal ride? Like what does that look like for you as far as on a bike ride? Uh, it would really be somewhere scenic. I live on the waterfront, so somewhere by the water, lots of trees, grass, be able to stop and have a picnic. Just, just real leisure, real chill. Love That's it. the vibes. <laughs> I love it. A little bit different from the vibes here. <laughs> So now this is the part where we call rapid fire. So we're going to first max out. Mama, um, where are you? <laughs> you guys ready to write my obituary? <laughs> I want you to go as fast as you can, push as hard as you can, and I'm going to ask you one word response question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ready? Yes, I'm ready. Awesome. All right, let's get up over 250 first. I want to change gears there. All right, first question. Hmm. Rapper R&B. R&B. Duke Ellington or Louis Armstrong? Duke Ellington. Jill Scott or Erica Badu? Erica Badu. Apple or Android? Apple. Long walks on the beach or mountains? Beach. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Uh, sweatpants and cozy clothes or dressing up? That's a tie, sorry. <laughs> um, Talk to me a little bit about Nike or Adidas. Nike. Hey. All right, Mr. Allison, we can actually slow it back down. Get oh. that heart rate back down. Y'all, I'm still alive. <laughs> yes. Take a deep breath. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Woo. Now, I'm super thankful for you agreeing to actually do this with me. Hey, man, no problem. I'm happy to be here. I want you to take a look into the camera. Uh -huh. I want you to go ahead and tell the good people out there, one, how can they find you, mm -hmm. but also how can they support you and what you've got coming up next. Awesome. I can be found on all social media platforms at Allison Belonk. Belonk is spelled like balance without the E at the end. My website is the same. Um, I'm putting out a new project soon. It's going to feature a lot of the collaborations I've done with other writers, songwriters, and producers over the course of quarantine. I'm also beginning to produce and compose, so probably gonna start releasing some of my instrumentals as well and getting diving more into that. If you haven't checked out Friendzone yet, 
featuring Duran Bernard. Check it out. It's on all streaming platforms. I really hope you enjoy it. And yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, like I said, we really appreciate you stopping by and getting that ride in with me. Mm. As always, guys, we look forward to connecting with you. See you on the trail. Peace.